as well. And this speaker is one of those people, you ever have those person in your life that is just amazing at everything? They love playing music, they play the piano, they play the guitar, they road cycle, they swim, uh, they even do scuba diving and love underwater life. I'm trying to be like them. They are also the head of developer relations at Kadena and here to talk about TypeScript patterns for better React components is none other than the one, the only, Glenn Reyes. Let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. All right, welcome to my talk about TypeScript patterns for better React components. So first of all, bonjour, Brussels. How's, how's it going? How, how are you doing? All good? All good? Awesome. So yeah, um, I'd like to quickly, quickly introduce myself. My name is Glenn Reyes. I'm also Glenn Reyes, but just keep the E's on uh, Twitter or X or uh, TikTok or whatever you want to call, call all the social medias. I'm a software engineer, tech speaker, and uh, workshop instructor, and also head of uh, DevRel uh, at Cadena. So let's talk about TypeScript today. Um, TypeScript has been around for like around 11 years. So I think, it's what, so I think it uh, was firstly introduced like 2012. I started myself uh, 2014 when, uh, with React, so it's been about, it's been about like nine years. And um, first, when, when React was first introduced, it was, I think, two, one or two years before, and it already came with some types, like prop types. And from the beginning, actually, um, TypeScript has been tightly integrated with Angular and Vue, so Angular early on was, uh, or un until today, has strong and early associations with TypeScript as with uh, Vue, uh, especially Vue 3, um, I think it was released around 2020, uh, 2020 um, and it was completely written in TypeScript from the ground up. So, um, but it's not the case with uh, React. And the way you want to type, uh, React is actually like, very unopinionated. And even like, if you look into the React source code, it's all written in JavaScript even. So, but uh, you know, some of the files like, are, are typed in something different called Flow. Um, which is their like proprietary uh, type type, uh, type type checking um, solution. So TypeScript types for React are purely driven by the community, and uh, when React came out, it didn't take long until the TypeScript community uh, added community uh, community typings for for React. So I personally think it's brilliant because it's like not tied to TypeScript, so it's like universal uh, to any any type that we may um, or may not uh, move over to. Uh, but today, um, let's talk about TypeScript patterns. So first of all, everyone have implemented something like this, like a Boolean prop. So we all know they're supposed to be used for like states, right? But not any amount of states, but just only like two. Like for example, disabled or, or checked or, or you hover, right? But what if you use it like for a variant, like primary? You'll click and notice it becomes odd and you know, very uncommon if you try to do it like this. But with TypeScript, it's actually possible to, to use it in a way by writing um, uh, string little union types, basically discriminating union types. So it's, it's cool, but a more common way is using string little union types um, to define like a selection of variants. It's a lot less compared also to, disc uh, to discriminative uh, unions. And good thing is, if you compare both, um, these are actually, they, they, don't not, they, they do not clutter your IntelliSense or auto suggestions compared to, um, um, compared to the other. So, uh, and yeah, how about, how about enums? So how, how do these come into place? Well, they are like super, super close to, to the string little worlds, but, um, the good thing with enums is they provide you like distinct types, so they allow you to distinguish types with the same values. So, for example, if you compare um, red value with uh, red value, but both are uh, different enums, they're not considered the same. So it also comes with the cons that if you like use a lot of enums, they may clutter your input statements, which is not cool. And on top of that, um, they add quite a lot of runtime overhead. So just like adding like a simple enum, they add like a lot of code into your compiled uh, bundle. Compared to like string, string little un uh, unions, it's, it's actually just a single line of code. 
So let's talk about um, um, enhancing components with HTML attributes. Let, there's a lot of ways on how you can do that. And I think in the beginning, especially, if you try to want to enhance that with some typings of HTML attributes, it can be daunting. And it's not super clear what each of them does what. And I'm going um, to explain, or I'm going to explain more in detail what each of them does. So first of all, we have uh, HTML attributes. Basically, this does not include enough enough uh, types for you. And they are, I think, more meant to add attributes that are shared across different elements. Um, and then there is HTML props, or um, I think, yeah, HTML props, which is alias to uh, all HTML attributes. And they basically are um, adding like more, more types, but in an in inaccurate way, kind of. So they are like more um, adding types that are like more compatible to you. So for example, if you have like an input, or in this example, like a button, um, instead of um, a type of button or submit or uh, reset, it, it, it's, it types it for you like, uh, as a string, so it makes, makes it more compatible. A better way is actually um, intrinsic elements. But the problem is, if you try to extend it, um, it's not going to work. So it errors when you inline it. And you can work around it with a, t with a TypeScript built in non-nullable type. And then you're good to go. But there is also button HTML attributes, which actually does the job that you want. So it's really, really good. And the actual type that you want is component props, which is like the real winner and the real type that you want. So there's no real difference between but button HTML attributes, but you just write less characters. So there is no, like, no reason why you would have to write more. And yeah, the perfect way of writing um, types, in my opinion, is using any of these. So component props. And if you want to be specific with ref, you just choose uh, the one with ref. And uh, if not, if you want to explicitly ha ha don't want to have a ref or want to have the component ref, uh, forward ref or something, you just use without ref, right? Now let's talk about compo uh, compound uh, components versus polymorphic components. So. To explain a little bit, um, compound, I think they are basically meant for customizing um, um, or for customization that is managed by the past component itself. Whereas polymorphic uh, components um, are components where you uh, have the customization managed by the primitive. So this means um, if you have, if you have uh, like, like, like color, it's defined by the icon component. Whereas if you have like compound components, you define the color in the, in the, in the specific component itself. Um, a great example of compound component is uh, the example of Radix, uh, the, the slot component. And it comes with a as child uh, prop, where basically um, is merging like props together uh, with, the, with the parent component. And this is like how it works under the hood. You have your slot component. And um, inside of the slot component, uh, you basically leverage uh, uh, merging props together by calling a clone element. With that, you're able to um, cl uh, merge props together with the parent uh, component and have basically like, functionality and props like merge together. And then basically on your button, you just uh, have a condition uh, with the as child prop. If that's used, you basically um, um, render this slot component with the, with, the comp with the parent component, and otherwise just, just normally as is. So polymorphics, on, on the other hand, uh, polymorphic components, on the other hand, are a great way to generalize the customizations of, an ele uh, of elements or components. And the implementation is not like super trivial, but to, uh, uh, to create a component uh, with like a super strict typings, but here's a, a simple uh, example of, strict, of a strict typed uh, polymorphic component. And I think um, essentially what, what, it, what, you, what, what you do is basically you call create element, um, but um, yeah, can, can also be ju just use like a variable declaration uh, uh, and render that as an element. Next I want to talk about is uh, rec.forwardref. So typing components wrapped in forward ref is in my opinion, like super straightforward. You just pass the element uh, through a generic, and on the second argument, basically the, for the props. Until you want to, to type comp a component that comes with generics. So how do you do that? There is 
you know, there is a lot of ways on how you can cheat, you know, with uh, with type assertion and things and things like that. But um, my favorite way on how to do it is basically to arg augment uh, forward refs. And TypeScript has a feature that is called um, higher order type inference that allows propagating like free type uh, parameters uh, on the outer function. That's uh, and that's basically what's happening here. And once you have that in place. Uh, you type your component with generics as usual, and you're ready to go. And I think this article is a brilliant, is a brilliant one that explains all the different uh, options in detail. So definitely check that out. I'll link, I'll link uh, another QR code at, at the end of my uh, uh, talk. So let's talk about context for a minute. So there's two ways on how you provide context. So first, you have like context with default values, and, and uh, second, without default values. So here is how you type context with default values. Basically, um, you um, like, like when you call the create context, you, you pass it with default values uh, uh, to the create function, and there also you have the type already in place. And then basically, you provide the default values to the provider as well, and consume it as usual. So um, you just consume it, and then you'll have all the typings in place. Whereas without default values, it's a bit different. Um, so for that context, it doesn't come with default values, right? So, you're, so they're generally nullable, and they need to come explicitly with a union um, of null. So then you provide, your provider may be initially null as well and updated with some actual uh, context data later. So, and because of that, you may need to check whether it's ready or not for consumption. It's a great idea to you know, create, create custom hooks that is um, create custom hooks if you definitely need the data, and with that, uh, you, won't, you won't have to do these checks like all the time. Now, overload function components. I think it's a great way, similarly to discriminative unions, for using uh, props that are related in conjunction. For example, if you have a um, data display component where uh, you have um, it sometimes want to use it as a type of currency or type of uh, unit, where you don't need you know, the, the currency prop, where, where, you know, where you only need the currency prop when you have a type of currency. And this way, you're able to, 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 to leverage, leverage that, the type of logic inside of the component. Now, type versus interfaces. So everyone, like who is writing types, who is writing uh, rec component uh, types with type? And who is using interfaces? Who is both? Who is like nothing, nothing at all, like JavaScript pure? Oh man, dude. <laughs> no, all good. <laughs> There's prop types, so you can still type with, uh, without TypeScript, all good. So types um, are more concise and easier to read, and you're basically also allowed to override um, by, uh, by, by, by using uh, intersection typing. But you cannot, like with type, you cannot add additional members. Like, uh, like, like you do in interfaces. Like, um, and, and with interfaces, the um, cool thing about interfaces, what you can do is extend it with other interfaces, it's, 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 which is you know, more safer than, than intersection types, which is also like, great when you want to enhance um, um, typings uh, of a third-party library. Like, um, and, um, yeah. and also, um, with interfaces, it's not possible to overwrite, which is, which is nice, but it's also uh, not so nice. But, my personal experience uh, with uh, type versus interfaces is that um, I had a project where um, at some point, like we had types all, all over. And at some point, um, it, it took me, it took a couple of seconds until when I had to save, until it actually saved. And we didn't able, we weren't able to figure out why it was like that. So um, we were thinking about, you know, just just um, replacing like the simple, like in simple cases, replacing type with interfaces, and suddenly the thing was gone. So there may have been like something cir circular computation going on that we don't really know. But um, this is like one example where I think um, interface will definitely help uh, computational work with your editor also. And therefore, my take is prefer interface for faster TypeScript compilation in your, in your editor. And also on that note, I'd also encourage you to to um, um, uh, encourage type uh, annotations, especially for function return types for faster compilation. And I don't say that just because it's my opinion. But it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually uh, on the official uh, TypeScript Wikipedia page on GitHub 
that recommends you to use interfaces or prefer interfaces um, over, over type and also do return uh, type annotations where it's possible or where, it's, uh, where it makes sense. Um, commenting, I mean, it's, it's like quite straightforward and trivial, but I think uh, it's still worth to mention it because it's like, I think it's like super underrated how it can help your mates um, to be more productive. My favorite example is uh, the one uh, from DayJS, for example, uh, the, format, the format function. Um, I really never know the, all the shortcuts of, the, of this format function. So every time I use it, I, uh, I, I see this, I see this intelligence, intelligence uh, thingy, and then I click on the link on the top, and this link, link basically leads me to the page where they show me all the shortcuts. So it's super, super useful. And of course, we are, we are talking about TypeScript. And <laughs> you cannot talk about TypeScript without talking about our, our best friend, like Annie. So yeah, it's, it's your friend, but it's also not, right? So if you, if you use it, or if you have it, at least uh, put, some, put some runtime parsing over it, like Zod. We have, we have heard about Zod today. So it's actually similar, similarly to like prop types, but it's not like tied to your prop types. And uh, you can, um, yeah, you should parse it like through that. Through that. And after that, like, like, by, like if you use Zod after that, you, have, you basically have your types in place. And of course, I need to mention that um, here also, um, um, as and the exclamation mark, the non-nullable type assertion, basically avoid them all. So, you know, this is like nice, it works. But um, if you do that, or if you have something like that, try to do or try to, uh, try to add type guards so that um, at least you can narrow down your, uh, uh, your, your typing more. Now, these are tools that can help us fixing like, low-hanging fruits really easily and automate uh, where possible. And with that being said, um, you may use like, there's, there's tons of tools that, that, that can help you um, basically um, you know, cover, cover most of the things. Maybe probably 50% of them you may, you may already use. But I put it up on the screen anyway. So just, just a reminder that, that tools are here to help and not make things more complicated. And remember that types aren't here you know, to, to just have fun with, with some stupid errors because you can't read it or it's, you know. TypeScript is here to create uh, more confidence, to create you know, more confidence with code. So that, um, uh, and, all, and also like the, the React TypeScript patterns I showed here are just, help, are just here for helping you decrease the maintenance uh, of your components. And yeah, go spend um, uh, uh, some time sharpening your, code, your, your types and you'll enjoy it even more. And yeah, embrace the power of TypeScript, uh, but yeah, don't take it too far. Thank you very much. <laughs>